now. It's time for the College of Ikes with Brian Brosdahl and Steve Panaz. Hey guys, welcome to College of Ice. Every time I see that that video of that uh, tip up turning, I, I I want to start running after that thing as well. Hey, happy Thanksgiving! I hope everybody travels safe and has a great uh, holiday with family and friends. I can tell you, I got up this morning, I looked in the fridge at home, and here's a 16 pound turkey thawing out in the uh, on the top shelf, and I realized that with COVID, we uh, canceled the family and friends that were coming over, so. Uh, it's going to be Karen and I and Pierce uh, with a 16-pound bird. So if anybody's looking for some turkey, uh, feel free to stop by. Tony, hey, thanks for joining us already. Hey, we've been hearing uh, reports of good ice coming in. Uh, I know we've got some fishable ice. I, I started getting a, a text from Bro yesterday with picture after picture of him out on the lake. So I want to talk to him about that in just a second. So, um, hey, Bro, uh, come on out, bud. What did uh, get you on here? How you doing, man? Hey, I'm doing great. I've got the the ice fishing cheeks going on here. Do yeah, you, you got the burn going on? <laughs> I do. It was awesome. So, hey, uh, happy Thanksgiving to you. Are, are you guys having turkey or grouse this year? Typically, as tradition, we like to have some grouse, and I got one right here, and I'm just waiting. I hope he doesn't move. He's drumming, <laughs> He's been drumming all day. And but he's he's hidden. He doesn't know I can see him. Oh, hey! I had fun Wednesday night. Uh, wasn't it cool having Kevin Van Dam and Chris Russell on? Absolutely, it yeah. was a great time. Just to yeah. have access to that uh, amazing uh, fishy talent, it's it's pretty cool. Hey, I also like to congratulate Daryl Ekstrom from Chaska, Minnesota, for winning uh, last week's uh, ice package. Uh, there we go, Daryl up there. Right, Daryl, one hundred and sixty nine dollar package of Frayville products, which is which is pretty cool. Uh, bro, if the, if the listeners tonight want to win, how do, they, how do they do that tonight? Just comment, ask questions, and like and share our show, and you're in to win. So show us the prize package. Yeah, there's the, uh, there's the like and thing. I do want to add that with ice conditions changing, one of the things if you guys could comment is send up, uh, you know, your location and some of the local ice conditions. I think that would be very, very cool. But here yeah. are some of the products that you can win from Frayville and, and that sort of thing. So it's uh, very cool. Hey, bro, uh, you got out of the ice yesterday. If you sent me any more texts, I was going to jump in the truck and drive up there because, I mean, my phone was lit up. You burned my battery out by half the morning. But, hey, talk to me a little bit about the particular lakes that you targeted yesterday. Where were you finding fishable ice? And, you know, what are the lake characteristics? I don't know. I want to know what lakes you're on, but the characteristics of the lakes you were fishing. Well, typically I, I, I target shallow bodies of water earlier, and I have a different uh, playlist as the winter progresses. And so some of the same lakes that you duck hunters are hunting mm -hmm. that have fish in them, chain of lakes, the shallowest one of the chain, um, lakes that have good vegetation, a chance of catching something good, you know, big perch, bluegills, crappies, walleyes, a lot of the panfish up here in deep water. So you, you don't want to target the lakes maybe that you want to go to. Have your playlist for shallow lakes. Do they have good milfoil? Do they have coontail? Do they have cabbage weeds? Good weed lines, close to shore, you know, that kind of stuff. And I have a lot of lakes all over the place. I don't just have them near my house. I have uh, lakes near Bemidji near close to Park Rapids, Walker, Grand Rapids, all the way to Duluth and up to the Arrowhead. And if I get a chance, I try to figure out what, what we've had for temperatures. I mean, you know, I, I actually found four and a half, close to five inches of ice and, wow. and it was really solid ice. But that being said, I chiseled the whole way. I drilled the whole way at all the safety gear and, it was uh, it was awesome, but you know, and there was a lot of places I could have went, and I just chose, and I found a good bite and caught uh, a little bit of everything. Yeah, you got walleyes yesterday. Show, run some of those pictures, actually, Kai. I'd like to show some of those out there. But hey, bro, how deep of water did you find the fish, and how deep? What was the max depth of the, some of the lakes you were on? Uh, it, they they get down to about twenty three feet, and I have a fish here that I'm going to bring up here in a second. There's a nice yeah. walleye. Yep. And uh, 
Uh, those fish were in eight to eleven feet, and then here's a uh, one I just caught. <laughs> you have the actual fish at all? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, we're gonna have a meal, but for Heather and I, it only takes four or five fish. You know, four or five. Fish. <laughs> The walleyes were too big. They all went back. We cut bass. It's it's just fun. And pike, it doesn't matter. It's scratching that itch for early ice. <laughs> well, you're crazy. <laughs> hey, uh, we got a really cool show tonight. Uh, we've got uh, a Freebill Pro and a conservation officer, Jeremy Rowe, coming in uh, in about uh, 10 minutes or so. He's out of South Dakota. we got Brad Novak. He's going to come back with uh, Lee. Thank you for sharing that. That's awesome, man. Uh, um, we've got Brad Novak from Omnia Fishing coming on board uh, in a little bit. We've got Russ Francisco from uh, Marine General up in Duluth, uh, a gateway to, up to the uh, Lake Superior and that, that, that fabulous fishery up there. So that's going to be kind of fun. But, uh, hey, bro, uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was colors. You know, what's the difference in your mind between, say, glows, UVs and just kind of standard colors. What are some of your go-tos and when do you go to bro or go to glow or go to uh, some of the UV stuff? Well, you know, depending on the water clarity, you know, I, I always like the, the green and anything looks like perch in my area because that's a major food source and that's a, uh, a fire belly spoon from North on fishing tackle, but it's, it's in traditional colors. Green is a great color up here and you can't go wrong. There's an eyeball spoon, uh, and you can see I got green and glow. And glows work great even during the day because when you bring it up to bait it, it's getting glowed by the sun. And you put it back down and it's ready to go. Here's a UV buckshot. Now, you'll notice the UV actually worked really well for the perch. I still have the meat on there. I have, I have wax worms. <laughs> T-boned and tailed down. Uh, UV worked better than anything else. But uh, the fire belly spoons are just a magnet for most fish. That's amazing. So one of the things I wanted to cover tonight, and I know you're excited about this, is it's Black Friday week. You know, we've got Thanksgiving. Everybody's going to start hitting the, um, uh, you know, not in the malls, but they're going to start going online and going to their favorite stores. And one of the things I'm excited about is is sharing our thoughts on a number of great gifts for the ice anglers in your family uh, and, and and friends. And, and, and it's also a great way to... Uh, drop hints for if you're looking for good uh, things. So we've got a number of really awesome uh, new stuff coming out there. Uh, we're going to talk about some some apparel. We're going to talk about some shelters. We're going to talk about rods, reels, that kind of stuff. So and even augers. So that's going to be really cool. Great. So Tracy Ann, good to hear from you. Thanks for coming in. Um, keep those ice reports coming in. Uh, that's really going to be cool. So, bro, how many fish did you actually catch yesterday? Oh, well, I don't know. 50, 60, and, and I'm, not, I'm not just saying a number like that. I truly was busy and uh, had swarms of perch coming through. I was expecting just to get a dozen fish, and they never stopped biting. And uh, But a lot of the places I've been checking out, there, there's people popping up, and they're out in in areas. <laughs> All right, John, I like that. Uh, <laughs> even a, a little lake. Attached to Bemidji Lake, uh, there's people all over it with five to six inches of ice. But, you know, stay close. All right, Eric, great comment. Hey, Eric. Uh, stay close to where people are. And if you're going to – don't go on your own if you don't truly understand ice. You know, we're going out. We understand it. And if there's a crack in the ice, remember, ice expands as it's freezing. So it makes cracks and those cracks are like welded together. So you, you can follow, you drill, you see the depth and you see the white of the crack and you can gauge it. But if you can't read ice like that, bring someone who can or stay where there's people, you know, and it's, it's safe to be in the middle. And I like the ice reports coming in here. That's great. I right do. This is awesome. Scott, thank you from uh, no ice down in Southwest Iowa. You know, I just drove across, uh, North Dakota a couple of days back and even there, uh, you know, Bismarck and, you know, that area, I, I expected Valley city. I expected hard ice up there and it was, there was still open water. And Thanks, we'll Tom. talk a little bit more with safety uh, when we, uh, when we join Jeremy in just a few minutes, but that that's pretty cool. Hey, I want to go back to colors because you're, you're not spilling the beans here. You know, when you got super clear water, you're looking for bright colors or, or dark colors. Talk to me a little bit about that. And if you're looking at real stained waters, you know, where what are your color? What's your color palette look like a little bit? Well, in clear bodies of water, I want to know what they're feeding on. If you're targeting perch, you want to you want to use a match the hatch kind of scenario we've been talking about for many years. And 
you know, in, in those bodies of water, perch patterns are really good. But sometimes perch, it could be uh, gold perch. It could be glow perch. It could be, you know, uh, kind of a, a green perch. But anything that looks like what they're after, it, in some places, they eat uh, spot tails in other lakes, like up at Lake of the Woods. They're into emerald shiners. and But there's a huge insect base, too, and crayfish. And a lot of lakes have rusty crayfish. And crayfish are actually a big food source. And in the wintertime, you know, in the basins, the crayfish, will some of them will dump down in the basin, but the fish are going to be around everything. So it's good to have a contrasting water. And uh, so uh, reds and red glows and green and purple on clear water, silver. It's not always gold, silver. You get on lakes like Bemidji or uh, Leech Lake, sometimes silver is good in Walker Bay, but on the main lake, gold is, is the trick. And so um, contrasting colors in dark water. I've done really well with purple and uh, purple and is I'm, a color I, I'm using much more than I used to. It's, I never used to use it up here, and I uh, ordered some bait uh, from Vados, and I just got it today, and went out and and pile drive the fish, and just kept four or five for Heather and I. And uh, but uh, maggots and waxworms on a uh, a glow or UV is yeah. is be good, and in UV dark water or or great lakes water where there's a little bit of a stain or it's stirred up remember red lake and lake of woods had a lot of wind during freeze up and that changes everything under the ice you know bro in a lot of the lakes though especially the shallower lakes where you're fishing weed walleyes and in a lot of the lakes too that are being stocked and they're relying on stocking to maintain i live on a lake like that right now you know, one of the primary forage of these fish is not perch, which you would think of, or, or shiners or something like that. It's juvenile bluegills. Yes. And so I find more and more that the purples, the reds, the yellows, and all that that really match the bluegill colors, the blues, uh, are actually pretty dynamite uh, in a crankbait pattern and a spoon pattern for walleyes, which is which is really awesome. So Great question, Kendra. And, yeah, it fish see colors, and, you know, it, it, it changes from uh, – you know, water to water and even in really stained water. I, I, yeah, gold. How about copper? Gold, copper in stained water, purple, uh, fire tiger purple, you know, just little changes. It just means you're going to have to buy more than one buckshot, you know, just try stuff. <laughs> you, you know, you got to make sure you have, I, I mean, I, I got bit off. I mean, my favorite lure and good thing I had uh, one with me. Otherwise, I'd be a long drive home. <laughs> you know the you know but talking about color color is one of those things that can be very important or not that important i mean it really comes down to your locations number one you know is the is the bait that you're presenting is it the right depth that you put it are you fishing it correctly and that color in a lot of cases is one of those things you can fine tune to catch more fish versus you know it, it sometimes it's a major color deal but most of the time, color is probably not the most important thing there is out there. So that's an important thing to consider uh, on that UV purple. Hey, uh, I'd like to bring in Jeremy Rowe from South Dakota right now. Jeremy, you've been uh, sitting in the queue for just a second. How you been, man? Good. How are you? Good. Uh, look at all those perch and walleyes behind you. You've been a Fraville <laughs> pro staffer now for about eight years, and you've got a degree in fish and wildlife out of South Dakota State. I By do. the way, I was with the school there. I had a scholarship offer to play football, and I kind of wonder what my life would have been if I'd have gone that direction. You kind of thought <laughs> you but probably would have never left. Hey, you were a game warden for 16 years. Now you're a regional manager, I guess, or supervisor for it. And one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was you've seen it all, yeah. I'm sure, over 16 years. Talk to me a little bit about some of the things that you've seen happen on ice, you know, in terms of ice safety and you know, what's, what are some things that ice anglers should keep in mind, particularly in the, in the lakes that you're, that you're on? Sure. You know, one thing that we always stress is, you know, no ice is 100% safe. I mean, you always got to take those extra precautions. So that's kind of one of the main things that we stress up here, especially early ice, obviously. We always say bring a buddy, have a buddy system. You know, bro was talking a little bit about, you know, using the chipper and chip your way out and auger your way out and check that ice. All those things are are you know greatly important all, all the way out. So I mean, we see guys going out earlier and earlier every single year. Um, you know, one of the main things that we see, uh, especially right now, is we're you know obviously we don't have too much ice right now, but as we get ice, we'll see a lot of waterfall that will be sitting on that water as it freezes. And then you know the ice angler comes along in two three days from now, 
and it might be five inches of ice on the shoreline or next to the shore, and then they go cruising across the lake, and then they you know ultimately drive into one inch of, wa- of ice from some waterfall. Oh, yeah. I so saw that gotta, they got to be paying attention at all times. So. I saw that in North Dakota last week. These huge schools of snow geese and, and Canadians that were just, I mean, literally thousands of them in the middle of the lakes and, uh, you know, keeping that water open. I, I guess I had never thought of that before. Where in Bro mentioned it too. You got that good ice on shore. You think it's good all the way across, and that and the waterfall could be. In the yeah, issue. especially you know in the Midwest here, I and mean, we see such a huge snow goose migration that comes through here. And they just seem like they stay longer and longer until that ice froze up. They'll, they'll literally stay till it's froze right all the way around them. And then even stand on the ice and melt it throughout the night before they head south. So, I mean, you definitely yeah. have to be aware of what's going on all the time on some of those lakes. Yeah. And I know that uh, you guys fish a lot of sloughs with a lot of cattails and bull rushes and that sort of thing. And those things can trap heat and they can be a problem as well. Yeah, we see that a lot, especially up in the Northeast. You know, they had some ice here just two weeks ago, and then there's guys that were walking out on about two inches of ice for what I've seen. It sounds like that's pretty much gone by now. Yeah. Um, but everybody thinks, you know, if you walk next to the cattails and whatnot, and that's where we see most people go through. Especially if you start driving four-wheelers on it, they'll drive in through around the cattails thinking that's safer, and then that's where you, where you see the four-wheelers go through. i seen bro holding, holding these up here. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, they're these they're things a, are they're a boss. These things are lifesavers. You know, you know, with the line of work that I do, we get called out all the time for you know people that go through the ice, that people that drive a truck through or whatnot. You know, ultimately the the bad thing about ice fishing is there's not really a quick rescue option. I mean, if you fall through the ice, you don't have a lot of options. So I mean, we always you know let's say the buddy system and have a plan. And these things are definitely a plan. I mean. We, we don't see a lot of people that drowned in the ice from falling through because they have these sitting in their hands or they have some self-rescue, you know, plan ahead. So that, that goes a long, long ways. I mean, because ultimately if you fall through the ice, a lot of it is a self-rescue. I mean, they're just, the timing's not on your side. So, I mean, having these here, you know, if you look at, obviously these are a great one. You can go around your neck like you guys got, you know, they, they uh, come out as you spike in the ice. You know, we've seen the, you know, other ones that go together and whatnot. And if you guys start, if you look at what happens when you fall into the water, you basically, you know, your hands start to freeze. You lose all gross motor skills. So those, those ice picks that you got to pull apart or if they're in your pockets or anything like that, you know, those just don't work when your ice, when your hands are freezing. So these have them around your neck, have them readily available at all times. I mean, that, that's huge for self-rescue. Yeah. I found myself. You're in trouble. Yeah, a lot of people have them in their shacks or in their sleds. Well, <laughs> that doesn't always work too well. No. Yeah, I found too that when I went through, I actually went through on purpose, is you've got to kick yourself so you're level to the ice to even have a, a prayer to get out, and it's pretty interesting. Hey, I wanted to show you some video real quick of, you know, in the old days, I used to tow everything. I used to tow my fish house on a, on a rope instead of a tow bar. So I, I know bro is a big fan of the tow bar and I suspect you are as well, Jeremy, but hey, Absolutely. check out this video real quick of what happens. Kai, go ahead and run the video. You can see that that fish house, there's no control of it. And then as soon as you slow down, I mean, the thing just crashes into your, <laughs> ruining your rods and, and breaking <clears throat> electronics and stuff like that. So I think that's important. Uh, so get a get a tow bar for your fish outs. I think, uh, yeah, you can see even in a rough rice, you got you got total control of it right there. Hey Steve, that was my house you borrowed, wasn't it? I uh, know I was the one that tipped over there, bro. <laughs> That's what happens when people borrow my stuff. <laughs> so Jeremy, you fish some really unique bodies of water uh, around home. I know you fish Lake Thompson and some of the probably Wabe and enemy swimming that sort of thing. But talk about the South Dakota lakes. I know uh, you're based in the in the uh, east south, southeast corner around Sioux Falls, and you're not dealing with the lakes that are fluctuating or continue to grow in size like they are up in the Glacial Lakes area. But you still fish unique waters. Talk a little bit about how you approach these lakes, and and when does the fishing really, uh, you know, when do you like to get out? You know, I love to get out early ice. I mean, that just seems like you know we're fishing in the boats right now. I mean, I was literally fishing just a couple of days ago in the boat yet. And you're already starting to see where those fish are transitioned up and uh, starting to make a plan for ice. But no out on fish, a lot of our lakes around here, main thing that I'm looking for is an old shoreline. That is kind of just the go-to spot. You know, if you have that old shoreline where our lakes are, you know, they flooded, you know, down here, you know, early 90s, mid 90s, it really got outside their banks. 
So you find that tradition, that tr um, transition from that old shore that's where you break off. That's usually where your weed beds are and stuff. And that always, always can be successful, you know, any time of the year. You know, when I'm out, I fish the Missouri River quite a bit, you know, especially ice fishing. I get up with Eric Brandright and we'll go up there and fish. You know, kind of the telltale thing that I always, I mean, current's a big deal up there. But one of the big ones that I always use and I always kind of tell people is, you know, a long, narrow point that leads to deep water and to the deep water that always comes in with the current. And those are always just kind of the notorious spots that always hold fish. So those are the kind of the two things. Look for an old shoreline and look for those long, narrow points. That's, That's big awesome. water there. That's really big water. And there's a lot of deep water out there. When does that freeze over? <clears throat> you know, usually early January, you can start to see, you know, your first little bit of ice out there. You know, Eric and I, we fish out there at Mulbridge quite a bit, and we're usually not going till about that, you know, I think it's the first week of January, that first weekend is when we're usually out there for the Mulbridge Ice Fishing Tournament, and we get to spend the week together and turn around and chase some walleyes in some deep water. It's a good time. Cannon. So your approach is on walleye fishing. Are you fishing more uh, the jig uh, type of approach? Are you doing any type of live bait, tip-ups, that sort of thing, or what, what's, your, what's been your, you know, your go-to approach? You know, for us down here, probably my biggest uh, go-to approach that has kind of been uh, my little ace in the pocket has been fishing chubs, fishing sucker chubs a lot. You know, I'll do it in the summer. We'll do it all. You know, the big Frayville bait coolers that just that came out last year with the double aerators. Yeah. Those, are, those things are so sweet to be able to keep your chubs in there, keep your sucker chubs or your creek chubs if you catch them. But I'll fish those all the way through the winter. So, I'll, you know, I'll use a lot of lipless crankbaits, a lot of jigging wraps, you know, bigger spoons. And then also I'll put out the, you know, the tip-ups with the chubs on them. And that, cool. that's kind of my ace in the hole in that nice shallow water, that four foot of water and put a big old chub down there. It, it's pretty killer most of the time. Wow. So, uh, so do you have any tips if you uh, accidentally have one extra fish? I mean, how do you talk to a game warden so you don't get in trouble? <laughs> if you, it's always an accident, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm still looking for that tip. <laughs> no comment. All right, we'll leave you alone. On yeah, that. Just don't catch that extra one, or just make <laughs> back, and you're good to go. So, so if somebody wanted to follow in your footsteps, I know a lot of uh, a lot of people would love to work in the outdoors. Bro is very fortunate to have a you know full time passion, chasing his passion. You do as well. I mean, what what advice might you have for somebody wanting to follow in your footsteps? You know, you know, we do, we get a lot of young people, a lot of outdoor enthusiasts that like to come and visit with us and, you know, want to be a conservation officer, want to be a fisheries biologist or whatnot. And, you know, we always tell these people, or I always tell them, you know, try to get your foot in the door. That's the big thing. You know, most of us, we all have degrees, um, you know, whether it's a wildlife degree or, you know, a lot of our officers have criminal justice degrees or what that might be, what that might look like. But, you know, get, you know, get a degree, work on your grades right away. And then get your foot in the door and definitely look for those internships. I mean, we hire, you know, 90% of our people come from our internship program. And that that is any state. Okay. I mean, if you can get your foot in the door there and work hard, um, that's going to go a long ways. Kind of put a face to the name, I guess. So Knowing them makes a big difference, you know, it, especially when you can meet them and know them and get to know yep. their work ethics and everything. And it's uh, it sounds like a great thing. Yeah, it's, you know, the internships can be your friend or they can hurt you. We've had... Had a few people that get their foot in the door, but they're they don't want to work very hard, so they, they can go both ways for some of them. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, you also uh, host a, a youth fishing event. Uh, if, if somebody's looking for more information about it, tell us a little bit about it, but also how did they get a hold of you on it? Sure. So, uh, a friend of mine and I, we started the Dakota Falls ice fishing uh, event out of Falls, South Dakota. There, we actually are going to take a year off this year just because of the whole COVID thing and trying to help yep. it out, but. We have about 500 kids that come each year. It's a free event. We give out, you know, close to $10,000 in prizes from awesome. the Dakota anglers and everything. Wow. We kind of started this when I was out checking ice fishermen. Ice anglers. You just didn't see that kid base out there. We didn't see that youth anglers out there. So I just been really kind of thought about that. And that was probably, it's probably been six, seven years ago now. So I got a, um, together with a good friend of mine is when we started it. So anybody ever wants to be a part of it i mean definitely dakota falls ice fishing facebook page is where all the information is at so it's a great event it's a lot of fun five six hundred kids will get on the ice between them and their families in one day and give that's away incredible prizes. so it's a big event it's pretty fun that's incredible yep. hey uh, bro before we let jeremy go do you got anything that you want to ask well yeah uh, i love the area i love south dakota and uh hi eric Cranwright. how you doing and 
it was one of my favorite places. I fished tournaments out there and I've ice fished uh, one of the original uh, first tournaments of ice. And it's just a great area. It's a very unique uh, place where you grow big perch fast. And you just got to know people, right? Yeah. So Great. whenever you want to come out, you just give me a call. Bro, it sounds like a road trip. It sounds like a yeah. road trip coming up. Yeah. I got my for that. Well, <laughs> well, Jerry, thank you for what you do for uh, for our sport, and, and uh, thank you for being here tonight. We really appreciate the time. And, yeah, thank uh, you. Look forward to getting on the ice with you sometime. Yeah, sounds good. Happy Thanksgiving, guys. You too. Thanks. Have a thank great you. night. Hey, bro, we're going to start uh, going into some of our, our product ideas, our gift ideas. You know, we really want to uh, make sure that uh, uh, everybody here gets some good gift ideas coming up. So I'd like to bring in Brad Novak with OmniaFishing.com. Uh, Brad, uh, you were, hey, Brad, how are you? Hello. Good, hey, how are you? <clears throat> Look at all those. What is that behind you? Oh, man, we got a bunch <laughs> of <laughs> You got lots of houses, yeah. huh? <laughs> We've been carrying and shifting these things around the warehouse all week. So we would like to get them out the door to everybody uh, listening tonight. Oh, that's awesome. So you've got some really cool specials uh, available. Yep. And one of the one of the fish houses that I know Bro is a big fan of is the, that Fribill Fortress uh, 260. Bro, talk a little bit about that. Well, I love it because <clears throat> it's got the echoed bottom. So you get more square footage of room. And it, the top is insulated, so you don't get that frost and that dripping on you, like a little rainforest above you. And the, the way it's shaped helps it from tipping or blowing around on the ice. And so it's a really cool pattern that they've made for this, and it's great for anglers. It's a serious house and sharp looking, but it fishes better than any other pop-up out there. Kai, bring up the photo of the fortress. I, I, I really think that the, the listeners here tonight would really want to see it. That's the old style. Let's go to the new one. Yeah, and if you look at it, you can actually see how the bottom goes out versus yep. uh, comes in like the old style. Oh, yeah. And, and, and the nice thing about that is uh, it really helps drive the wind uh, up and over the fish house versus under it. And you also get about uh, 50 uh, some percent more fishable space inside. So it's a perfect size house for uh, two to three anglers. Bro, bro, what does that thing weigh? I think it's a 30, 30, 33 pounds. Right. pounds. Right. Yeah. So you could, and you could pack it anywhere. You know, even if I have some uh, flip styles, uh, if I have a 195 or whatever, I, I could put this behind the seat in my truck and have it as a spare if we have extra people. But Heather and I love fishing in it because you could sprawl out and have a lot of holes and gear in it. That's awesome. So, Brad, you've got uh, – I know the MSRP on the Fraybill Fortress is $299. $299, yep. What are you guys selling for it? We um, are selling right now for $179. $179. $179, oh. yes. You really and, want to go and free shipping on that? Free shipping as well. So every anytime you order over 50 bucks on omniafishing.com, you get free shipping. And so that meets the threshold. We will ship it to you. Oh wow. my God. So bro, are you buying me one or two of those? <laughs> oh my. You don't get any. They're gone. And, and Brad, how long does this sale go on? Sales going on for a while. So um, we are actually, Omnia Fishing is hosting an ice event next weekend or Thursday through the weekend. And so these, these deals, we're going to expand on our deals. Um, so this one is good all the way through then. We do have a limited amount, um, but as long as we have them in stock, the sale is still going on. So oh, yeah. is it isn't hers. Remember that. So the white. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, Heather? I, I'm all game for that one. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, is your retail store going to be open as well as the online store with COVID or what's the, what's the latest on that? Yep. So black Friday, we will be in here. Um, but you know, like we said, um, everywhere is, we will ship these to you. Um, now the flip, we do have the, the new, uh, the ice hunter sidesteps and we can't ship those. Those are a beast yeah, to ship. Yeah. Um, so if you are local in the, the Minneapolis twin cities area, you can come pick them up. Um, but these ones we will ship to you, or if you want, you can come pick them up in the store and maybe set them up this weekend. That's awesome. Hey, one of the other one of the other uh, products that Bro and I are huge fans of is the Plano Edge tackle boxes, and I know you guys offer a number of them there. Yep. I'm a huge fan of the bladed jig box. That's an open water yep. uh, bait, but I've never seen a box that that organizes your jigs or your bladed jigs like that at all. And you guys have those on sale, or they're not really on sale. No, nope, they are on sale. So we st we started our Black Friday sale early, um, and so right now those are on sale, twenty percent off as 
as well as a lot oh, wow. of stuff on our website. So um, if you you all you have to do is use code BF2020 and you get 20% off Plano. Um, all the information's on our site, on our homepage. Well, that's so awesome. Those are I didn't know that box was on sale, bro, and yeah. we picked that one anyway. <laughs> yeah. and I, bro, which one are you using for ice fishing? You're using an edge box for your, for your ice box. Well, I've got uh, I've got my, my home unit here, which I don't want to bring on the ice because it might end up in someone else's hands. But 37s, 36s, yep. and I like the little 35. This is yeah, my, yeah. I'm a, I'm that's a my red weight box right there. Yeah, yeah. I, have, I do. I do have cool. some breaking news. The the thirty fives have not shipped yet, so we those are the only ones we don't have yet. But we do have the the smaller thirty six hundreds. Oh, um, the are great. Yeah, thirty six. The thirty fives are coming. They're on order. Um, we don't have them quite just yet. Yeah. You know the nice thing about the edge boxes is everybody thinks about the you know uh, rain and everything for introducing moisture into it. But the edge box is it has that uh, waterproof seal around it and it has that uh, restrictor in there. So it's uh, actually an awesome box for ice fishing because it keeps your stuff dry. And if, if some moisture does get in there, it's out Keep there. The so snow, yeah. the snow, uh, you know, break the flakes up into little micro stuff and it gets in everywhere. The snow doesn't get in them. And if you do get a little bit of snow in your opening and you're in a storm out there fishing, you don't have to worry. It's got a water wick and it's, it's truly a great design, but it's not just a winter gift. You know, if you have someone that's a, a bass head, you know, you think ahead right now. Yeah. We're and, well, those are, those are really neat features, but the, by far the best feature is you don't have to cut these little pads. <laughs> I you love don't that. have to cut them. They come free cut. All you have to do is slide them in. No more cutting. Yeah, oh. Which is awesome. <laughs> I've got my thumbs trying to cut those things, you yeah. know, and then you step on them later somewhere. Yeah. So, bro, I know you're a fan of round tip-ups. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that Frabel, um th Pro Thermal. Oh, I, I love it. It's It stacks. They stack in a bucket like cards. And when you take them out, they fold out. They cover the hole. They keep the hole from freezing. Uh, they have a little compartment. You know, let's say you're fishing for walleyes and you got lighter line and you get bit off. You don't have to run back to your house to get hooks. You can leave them right in there. And that's a neat thing is how organized it is. And you don't have to worry about freeze up. You can just put them out there and let them go. Yeah, that's awesome. So you guys have a special on the yep. Freebill uh, Pro Thermal Rounds, the Chartreuse one, which actually comes with the little uh, the little shiner light, which yep. is very cool. Yep. You can see the light right on the, the, the yellow light right there. Yeah, we got a photo of it here. And, you know, what's great about this, uh, particular product as bro mentioned they fit in the buckets but th the nice thing too is that you know later in the season you can get light piping comes coming through the hole and if you're fishing say pike high up in the water column a lot of times that light will spook them so i like the round tip ups or blocking the light uh and then they, the holes don't freeze up as well so now you guys have these on special as well right yep so these are 24.99 if you buy two you get one free so all you have to do is add three to your cart. That one will automatically uh, get deducted. So buy two, get one free. Wow. If you're in Wisconsin where you can use three lines, you're done right I, I now. <laughs> yeah. That covers three people who are jigging. Yep. That's, that, that's amazing. So Omnia is a unique online tackle store. I mean, yep. you guys actually do provide recommendations, uh, specific lure, rods, reels, whatever recommendation lines based on sp uh, specific waters yep. talk a little bit about how you guys develop that those uh, those recommendations yeah it's funny listening to bro earlier is basically music to my ears and talking about what colors to use in water clarity so that's basically what our website does among a lot of other things is when you're going to a specific lake um, there are a bunch of different factors that go into selecting the most appropriate lure to increase your chances of getting bit. And so we take things into consideration like season, water clarity, like you guys had mentioned, um, um, time of year, what structures in the lake, what species are in the lake. We use all of those, all of those different data points into recommending products specific to you. And a lot of your your recommendations too are coming from consumers that are yeah. actually filling out fishing reports and your ambassador program. I think it's a very cool, a cool idea because we do the same thing on Lake Commandos. We'll pull up to a body of water and bro, you've been in the boat with me. I yeah. mean, we'll walk to the dock, we'll look at the water clarity, we'll look at time of year, we'll look at species, we'll look at forge, we'll look at structure. 
and and uh, really and species that we're targeting and, yeah. it, and it starts coming together but you guys have done that process for people that are shopping and that's really unique nobody else is doing that exactly and then like you had just mentioned we're adding that extra component of real-time information where people can if they go out and they have a successful day on the water they can file a fishing report and just give general information no no locations just general information what was working you know yeah. Were you jigging it fast? What color were you using? Were you using noise rattle baits, maybe silent baits? Just little hit tidbits uh, that can kind of help um, someone new to a body of water or going out for the first time in a while. Um, all of those different factors go into kind of helping the angler be the most, have the most success on the water. So when does your ice event start again? So our, our ice event, uh, it's on, uh, on our Facebook page, but it's December 3rd. Uh, the ice event is... December 3rd, we're going to be doing a live show, um, but our ice event runs from December 3rd to the December 6th. So I believe it's a Thursday to a Sunday. So like I mentioned, these deals are live right now that we mentioned on here. Um, next week, we'll, we'll definitely be expanding uh, on, on some more deals. That's wow. awesome. Hey, Brad, yeah. thank you so much for joining us tonight. You guys got some great deals. And uh, if you guys haven't checked out OmniaFishing.com, you really got to check it out. It's a, it's like a New York is where you want to sell it. Because they could use like umpteen lines over there. <laughs> we ship, we <laughs> ship, free shipping. <laughs> Brad, have a great Thanksgiving. Thanks for joining us tonight. Same to you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. So, bro, um, I don't know, man. That, that those those are tough to beat. Those are pretty cool. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, they work great. I've got. 40 inch plus pike on those things and and you can set them light for walleyes really cool deal and yeah. uh thanks for the compliment lee yeah and uh a question on uh if you're asking about where omni is located in the twin cities it's actually out of golden valley just go onto their website you can find the, the location uh the address to the location but it's on the on the west side of town uh just off of like 155 if you know the area at all so Hey, hey, bro, let's move on to some specials that uh, that are actually available at Fraybill.com. And one of them we mentioned last week, but I want to mention it again, is uh, is the i3 suit. Oh, yeah, that's that's the one I like to use. It's You don't get too sweaty in it. It's a perfect ice fishing suit. I love it. And if you buy the coat, you get the bibs for 50% off. And it's warm. You can kneel. It's got It's ergonomic. It's... The, the knees are pre-bent, the elbows are pre-bent, and it's got self-rescue spikes right there. Um, just love that suit. And actually had it today. I was wearing it today and yesterday because I was ice fishing. <laughs> That's awesome. Quit teasing me, by the way. <laughs> hey, the other thing that, and I know you're a big fan of the uh, the uh, ice, uh, the straight line reels. They have the combos on sale for $25 off as well. So talk a little bit about the 371 combos. Well, the, the 371 combos from you know, from the micro light all the way up to the 35 inch, uh, you got all the different rod combos. You've got the different delights, the heavies, but the 371 reel has no spin because it's straight line. It brings the line on the way the line goes off and, you know, spin scares fish, it, especially in pressured waters. If the fish are biting like crazy, you may not need it. But if you truly want a chance at really big bluegills at big perch, you want 371. Reels in 22 inches of line every turn, free spools. It's a solid reel. We've had it for years. Everybody loves it. Great bearings. It, it'll free spool an 84th ounce jig and, uh, you know, just set the tension. It's a, a drag, a clutch drag system. So if you get a big fish, you don't have to worry. They're a really cool reel and they have their place in time. I just love them. Yeah. So they've got, the, I know Frable's got them. There's a photo of one right here. So they've got a ton of models on sale right now that are available at uh, twenty uh, twenty dollars off, I believe. So it's uh, hundred instead of a hundred bucks, it's seventy nine ninety nine, which is a good a good deal, free shipping and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Hey, um, I know uh, I'll never forget a trip with you, bro, where you and I went out. We we bolted across Lake One of a Gosh. We hit some little transition area out in the base, and then it was carpeted with perch. Yeah, and, and you're fishing and you caught like four or five of them and then your hands froze because it was 26 below zeros and you said take over the hole so the school doesn't leave yeah so, I, so i'm catching fish like crazy and and you're standing over there warming up your hands and then my hands went numb and i couldn't fish them anymore and then you moved into the hole but you were too slow and the fish left so we only up with i think 10 or 11 but 
Uh, bottom line is if you don't keep your hands warm on the ice, particularly to when it's 25, 30 below zero, I mean, it, it can get ugly. And that's why I'm excited. Uh, I think the best fishing glove on the market out there right now is the Fish Monkey Yeti. Oh, absolutely. It, it's an amazing glove. It actually comes in a glove. I've got one actually. Here's a picture of it here. But I've actually got a glove and a mitten right with me right now. Um, they're, they're an absolutely cool product. They've got a gold leather palm, which is really grippy. They've got 350 grams of insulation in the back. You can see how meaty and, and heavy duty these are. They've got pre-curved fingers. And bro, talk a little bit about the, the liner in the side. In inside, the, the liners are really unique as well. A liner there that that spreads the heat around. This is a new level of genius here. This actually disperses the heat and spreads it around. It's got a cell phone finger. Yep. And it's got nose wipe right here. See, so you know how you get that little. Yeah, it's right here, man. I use it. <laughs> I mean, and then the, the 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 leather palms. They're nice because when it's 30, 40 below. Yeah, I don't know if it gets that wherever you guys are at, but when it's really cold, everything turns brittle and hard and and uh, just a great glove. I mean, Fish Monkey's created some genius stuff. Yeah, and they've got some special. Oh, right so if you're looking, I don't care if you're an ice fisherman or an open water fisherman, Fish Monkey's got some really cool products out there. Uh, great gloves for open water and ice, and they got some specials going on right now as well. And uh, so bring up that graphic, uh, Kai. It's the... Uh, they have a black thing. It's already a Black Friday sale that's going on now. So if you spend a hundred bucks or more, you can get one of these face guards, which uh, which is not a balaclava. It's a face guard that just comes up over your nose and face, but it provides you know some air restriction. It's it's actually a very cool deal. And if you spend uh, what is it thirty dollars or something as well, um, you can get shipping uh, on it, and you can also get a glove pack. So I, I recommend you guys go to fishmonkeygloves.com. And check out their products. There, I, I I can assure you that these are the best gloves I've ever had on them. And I'm, you know, proud to talk about them. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I get extended periods of cold. Uh, last year we had over a month of thirty below in the morning, and so I, I get up in the morning. I'm like, oh my, again, you know, where you're breaking handles off your cars, just opening them, and so fish monkey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, bro, one last thing. We've covered uh, houses. We've covered, you know, a lot of different things. One thing we haven't covered is uh, augers. And I know there's oh, yeah. a company out there that you're proud to, to, to work with as well. That's it, that's really sure. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, uh, Kyle, a question on that. These gloves, when it's 30 below, no, your hands are, they're not too bulky. No. If, uh, if I'm fishing a, a, a large fish, a lot of times, uh, and, it, and it's not too cold, I will take the gloves off. But you'll be surprised how, how uh, you know, really how much you can handle the the reel and the, and the rod with these. They're, they're very ergonomic and, and they're they very are. finesse. You could use a straight line combo with, well, I can. Well, let's just say that. I might give it to someone else and they'll, they'll backlash it. But I'm just saying that they work really well. And I was fussy when I gave him my requirements about what I'd like to see in a glove. And he came out with this and I, I, I the Mossberg, he's a genius. Tim. Yeah. Owner of the company is amazing. Hey, uh, we're, we're going to, we're going to skip uh razor for just a moment. I want to bring Russ Francisco in owner of Marine general up in Duluth. And Russ has been sitting in the queue for a few minutes and Russ, I really appreciate it. Hey, Russ, how are you? How are you? It's hey, very good. good to see you. It looks like you're in the holiday spirit already over there. Love it. Well, you know, being Italian, you got to come home a little early the night before Thanksgiving. <laughs> or else, you know, so I'm sitting in my my living room, but uh, yeah, it's, we're getting ready for. Uh, we we don't get many days off as retailers, as you know, and so no, we're going to take advantage tomorrow. Day. Yeah, and you guys, you guys are, are very hard workers, and it, it, your uh, your inventory is really amazing. Uh, it's a great stop for any fisherman to come in and and get some things, but. One of the things I wanted to talk about, and this is something I don't know much about, and bro, maybe you do, is is the Great Lakes has a phenomenal fishery. You guys are based in Duluth, kind of the gateway to Lake Superior. What, you know, when does that fishery key in? You know, what are some of the hot baits? What are some of the top locations? I mean, can you tell us a little bit about fishing the Great Lakes? Sure. You know, uh, out of Duluth, we're lucky because we're on the west end of Lake Superior. So we have the St. Louis River the basin or the harbor and then we have the lake people are still trolling right now and and uh yeah. if you drive 20 minutes 
from the lake, we're standing on four and five inches of ice. So it's a real interesting place to be because we're at 600 feet and the top of the hills at 1400, you know, so it's a, it's interesting. So this morning, the fellows call us in pictures. We're on a solid six inches of ice north of Duluth. Uh, and we're fishing. We're running predator rigs right now. We've got lots of tip-ups going out. Uh, more and more people going every day. First ice, got to be careful, as everybody knows. But still, we have really good clean ice. We don't have any snow on top of it. So, uh, oh, so we're, you know, we're praying for a drought. Uh, so it's, uh, right now we're in good shape. Uh, but but uh, yeah, so so right now we're running uh, we're running uh, predator rigs with suckers on them. We're running minnows on on a small jig, uh, and uh, and people are jigging that way. Uh, pretty traditional. What will happen here in the next, oh, probably, I would say probably in the next week to 10 days, the river's got a crust on it right now. When that river hardens up, then we'll be in the upper river, and then we'll start fishing walleyes. And contrary to what people think, the walleyes don't stay out in the big lake uh, all winter long. They, they And then come in and all the time and spawn like they do in a lot of places. Uh, they're already moving into the river system. They like the bait. They like the flowing water. Uh, they like when the dam gets open. They, just, they like different things. So we were short casting even a week ago and doing pretty well. Now we'll start to uh, to fish through the ice. And the first thing we'll do is we'll run. Uh, we'll run. I brought some stuff with me. We'll start to run. Uh, you know, uh, stuff like this. Uh, yep. Color. Yep. And, 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 yep. And we'll run glow in the darks. A lot of golds. That type of thing. And and at the same time, the the pouts will come in. And go up in the same area and then we start to run heavy baits you know two oh ounces, yeah you know stuff like that off the bottom so that's what we'll do and then in february the lower basin will usually freeze and then we start all over again we run buckshot rattle jigs we run we run stuff like this right yeah that's uh, awesome yep and so we'll run we'll run those shads and, and uh and uh and this i'm, I'm excited i want to try this this year this is this i'm excited about this oh one. yeah <laughs> we'll get hooked on the ice because they're so yeah, and, and it's it's a little different shape and it makes noise and so i'm excited about that so, so awesome. we'll, we'll see that and then once we hit you know a lot of times right around february uh the lake will start to freeze the west end of the lake and the schwamigan bay area and then, we, then, we, then we're on to stuff like this uh it doesn't always happen but we did last year we got a couple of weeks and we'll start to run uh jigs oh, like yeah. this style we'll put cisco's on them smelt uh let's see where i'm going there we go and uh, go. and so we'll, we'll run that type of stuff so that's really good and when that happens uh, Duluth becomes on fire. I mean, not 50 people, not a hundred people, a thousand <laughs> people come and it's crazy. really, yeah. yeah, it's crazy. It's just nuts. So, so Russ, if somebody wants latest conditions on the ice, uh, I, and I know superior can get, you know, can change dramatically in a day, even, you know, can they call the store and ask for latest ice conditions and stuff like that? Or what do you recommend on that? Yeah, call the store. We'll tell you what's biting. Slate trout. We have a big coho fishery. We have uh, we have uh, steelhead or uh, loopers because people can catch them and, and keep them. Um, and then we've got uh, uh, lots of um, oh walleye fishing right out of the piers, right out of the entries. We fish pouts all the time. Uh, so you know lake trout. It's not really a salmon fishery other than the cohos, uh, and it's all the way up and down the shore. I mean, it's it's really good. Uh, we usually get ice in the west end of the lake, right in the corner, in front of the store and stuff. So we'll usually do that. If we have a good winter, uh, we could get uh, we could get ice all the way to Grand Marais. And when that happens, it's just oh. it's a stitch. It's a ball. Absolutely, Heather loves the coho up there, and whenever it freezes, the, you you start seeing us around there. <laughs> yeah, coho fishing is a, is a is a ball, you know. Yeah. Coho and, coho and herring, you can catch them herring. all day long when they're there. So the herring fishery, I know that's a unique fish for a lot of people. Talk a little bit about, you know, targeting those and what baits. And that's a sight fish fishery, isn't it? Uh, a little bit. But actually, you know, they'll fish them at 30 to 40 feet. We put some cameras down to watch them swim. They'll come off the bottom, come right up underneath the ice and go back down again. And they'll, they'll, fish with, they'll swim with other fish. The big thing is we use – the one thing about Lake Superior, uh, people think it's really expensive to fish. Uh, basically, when those cohos and, and herring come in, you're going to run your crappie rod. You're going to run a – uh, 64th, maybe an eight ounce jig, put a wax worm on it and go fishing, put a bobber on yeah. it and go fishing or jig. So it's a pretty inexpensive fishery. You got to behave and you got to know what you're doing. You got to ask questions. So not so much to catch a fish, but you got to understand the lake doesn't always freeze. So ice can move, right? Uh, so you need to know what yeah. you're doing and you, and you never hide inside of a tent without watching what's going on because, and you watch your, your line. So if you're, if you're fishing in the middle of the hole, all of a sudden the line goes to one side of the hole, you're moving. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, so you, gotta, you gotta pull stakes and go quick and it doesn't go like in two seconds but but you got to pay attention and when that when that ice when that line goes to one side of the hole you look around and say what's going on maybe it's time to get off and walk to the edge here and see what's happening so 
So, and we don't go out a long ways as a rule, but in the years where the lake freezes whole, uh, people go out two, three miles, you know, they're out in the middle of Lake Superior, it's crazy. Uh, people skate out, you'll be fishing and people will skate right by it, you know, a set of skates. Uh, and so it's a, it's, it's a fun place. We're very fortunate to live where we do and be able to have all these different kinds of fishing. And you can, like I say, you can pull stakes and drive for 20 minutes and fish uh, crappies or whatever you want in the inland lakes. The upper river is really doing well. We are getting, starting to get jumbo perch. I mean, and I mean, 14 inches, 16 inches, and they're bouncing back after the flood we had five years ago, it sort of wiped everything out, but they're all bouncing back. So it's been a good time. So if a, if a first timer came up there and wanted to target, say, lake trout and the lake is allows it, are there a couple of rivers or a couple uh, areas, uh, cities or whatever that you'd recommend they consider going out of? Well, we usually come on, come on. The, the lake trout are always going to be, as a rule, are going to be close to shore. And, and, and I say this will be anywhere from 75 to 100 feet of water, but it's close to shore. OK, drops yep. off. So so we come out of Duluth or, or maybe two harbors, uh, depending on where, where things are happening. Uh, and then check the ice conditions, and then we go out we, uh, we, and we jig fish. And then well, when the fish go deeper, like 70 to 100 feet, then we go to power pro line or steel line uh, because you need to be able to uh, set that hook and catch a fish. If you use monofilament, you got to be a real quick runner, and you got to run, you know, 50, 100 feet just to even set the hook. So we use non-stretch line. It works a lot better, and uh, it makes things real easy. That's awesome. Russ, do you guys have any uh, – uh Big promos going on uh, at the store for Black Friday. Yeah, this is an interesting year. We got Black Friday. Uh, ice fishing is beginning, and there's no shows. So, so we 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 took all the inventory for shows, even though there's no shows, and we brought it into town. So we've got discounts on augers. Uh, if you go to the website, you'll see them all. But we got augers. We got uh, depth sounders. You can save. Uh, we bought a bunch of Garmin stuff. You can give, save 600 bucks on a Garmin depth sounder right now. Uh, if you want to pan optics with uh, live view, you can save. Uh, we're building some kits that are all seasons. We build them in the store, put them together in the store, and you can save yourself $900, $1,000 right now. So we've got some stuff we were really gearing up for the shows, and we took it anyway and piled it up. And uh, and it's 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 going to be a fun season for the consumer. And we're stretching it out because the shows you know are in the next few weeks. Uh, and because we can't jam people into the stores, you know, because uh, for safety reasons and, and COVID reasons, we started doing this about a week ago. And we'll stretch it out for the next three, four weeks. So, uh, you know, stop in at the store, call us. Uh, uh, we're even doing curbside, whatever it takes to make people comfortable. That's awesome. That's great. Well, well, Russ, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. We really oh, appreciate it. I hope you guys have a, here, Russ. have a great Thanksgiving. And yeah. uh, I look forward to seeing you again at the, at the ice shows where we can start going back to them someday, again. Someday we'll be there. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank Alrighty. you. Have a great night. Okay. Yep. So, bro, I don't know if you read all the comments there. They said he's a legend and he knows more than you. I don't know if uh... Uh, <laughs> Russ knows a ton. He's been there. A, he's a great fisherman. He's a retailer, and the guy knows his stuff, and he's so personable. He'll he'll be have a big deal going on, and he'll be talking to someone about where the cohos are biting. He's just a great guy. Super nice. His whole family's great. Always fun sharing Turkey Day with them. They have a Turkey Day where they feed turkey to the community and just go there oh. and talk ice. And we didn't get to have it this year, obviously, but uh, I've eaten a lot of turkey there with them. You know, I, I've made it a point. I, I, I've wanted to go to Superior and fish lake trout. Uh, I mean, every year I say I'm going to do it. I, mean, I love targeting lake trout. They're just a fun fish. They fight so hard. Um, and, uh, so that's, I want to put that on my to-do list. Uh, There's so major, major good trout in right in Duluth. I, uh, Heather and I have been out there fishing and we've seen trout over 20 pounds caught right next to us. And, and you can catch a lot. Some days you can catch dozens. Uh, yes. and, and we, we, we take pictures. Some people forget their phones or cameras, whatever. We get pictures of them with these big trout and it's amazing. It's right there. You're not that far off of shore. Be careful for offshore winds. And uh, yeah, but I've I've seen numbers of trout. You can catch uh, dozens of trout, and there's there's a bunch of little schoolies down there. And the the fishing can be can be great. And and Heather, I don't know how she always catches coho no matter where we fish out there. And hopefully she'll share some with me someday. So that uh, that Schwamigan, he mentioned Schwamigan Bay. That can be a phenomenal fish here. I actually targeted right. smallmouth bass there. Uh, years back, uh, Ted Takasaki and unfortunately Jim Hudson uh, was our guide on that uh, trip. But yeah, that's it. Uh, it uh, my joke on the smallmouth is that they fight really hard through the ice until they try to jump, and then they, uh, then they, <laughs> then they get slow, a they slow down a little hey, bit. Hey Joseph, I like using light flies also, especially when I'm fishing Superior, and I always have some packed. 
Yeah. Hey, bro, we got one more product I want to cover, and then we're going to have to start wrapping things up here pretty quick. Uh, I yep. do want to remind people that uh, continue to send in your comments and your ice conditions and things. We appreciate you guys being here tonight. We are going to pick the winner of the uh, the College of Ice Frable Ice Pack here relatively soon. As soon as the show ends, we're going to just keep it going. We're going to shut down, bro, and I are going to talk to Kai, and we're going to grab a winner, and we'll announce it immediately after the show. So just please stick around. It's a it's a great prize pack, uh, uh, $160 or something, yeah, including the mug. Yeah, including the mug. So those this? are awesome. Not this one, but another one. Yeah. So, bro, um, a company called Razor Augers, RazorPower.com. They have a uh, they've got a, a 40 volt electric model, and they got a 24 volt electric uh, power, and they got curved blades. And this this auger cuts like a dream. It, it's got forward and reverse. It's even got a, a built-in light. So uh, if you're in a dark uh, wheelhouse or something like that, you've got it. And those curved blades uh, really cut well. And they got chipper blades, too, if you're reopening old holes or if you're working some heavy stuff. But eight got a, inch and, and an eight-inch auger will cut 100 holes through 16 inches of ice. So it's twice as much as the competition. For the, the for the twenty four volt, which is really impressive, and yeah. the, and the good news is they've got it on sale right now at RazorPower.com with free shipping for uh, just three three ninety nine, which is actually with an eight inch blade, which is pretty awesome. Are you uh, out of your mind, <laughs> 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 Heather? You cracked me up. And then they've got the forty volt model, which I like, and that thing will cut seventeen hundred inches of ice. That'll get you through a full weekend in most cases. And the eight-inch blade with uh, the curved is four forty-nine, and they've got a ten-inch blade uh, with curved blades uh, for for four seventy-nine ninety-nine with free shipping as well. And Great then, for I, bro, I know you're a fan of the Scout. That's the one that you actually run with a uh, like a Milwaukee drill or something like that. And those things are selling like hotcakes. They're only eighty to about a hundred bucks, depending on sizes. Oh, they rip through the ice too. It's unbelievable. They do. And so they're going to have those, the four, five, and six inch models are selling out. I mean, their inventory is almost gone already, but they've got a, uh, you buy one now and you get a 50% a off on the second set of blades. So if you have two blades and an auger, uh, you're set for, I don't know, a couple of years, I bet for uh, about a hundred bucks or just a little bit more, which is it's pretty amazing. For blades, you know, especially if you're traveling, you know, it just, just in case you hit something in the ice or, you know, if you're out in the Dakotas or if you're, you know, in, a, in an area that has rocks or structure and you don't have a map. So you can't yeah. use the for minnows. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, bro, uh, I, we're going to have to uh, wrap this up pretty quick. But I want to talk. Oh, we got a really cool show coming up this Sunday at 7 p.m. We got Gussie coming on board. Uh, Jeff Gustafson, you guys know him as an elite bass pro. Uh, but he's also a, a, a hardcore ice angler and loves lake trout. So we're going to go deep into lake trout fishing with him. And I'm nope. uh, looking forward to that. Yes. And uh, we also got uh, Shane Dubois or Dubois? Dubois. From, uh, Dubois, yeah, out of uh, Wyoming. And we're also going to go deep into winter trout with him as well. He's originally from Wisconsin, moved out to to Wyoming and is living the trout life out there. So that's a cool area. Really neat stuff out there. It's going to be very interesting. And Gussie, Lake of the Woods, the other side. Yeah, the north. And he's out of Kenora, which is uh, really going to be kind of cool. And then we've got uh, the guys coming in from Frank's uh, out over in Michigan. I know you've been over there yourself. So talk a little bit oh, about that. Great guys, uh, Joe Reimer and the boys. and not, But they're not going to have Krabby Dan on the show. But uh, the other guys are going to be there. <laughs> And Larry's too busy. We're going to have Joe, and we're going to work him over. Well, awesome. So, guys, this was sort of the Thanksgiving edition of College of Ice. We wanted to really get into some product ideas and some tip uh, for for uh, some gift ideas with going out this week. But we're going to get hardcore back into the tips and techniques uh, going forward. Believe it or not, uh, our next show is our halfway through the season already, bro. That's uh, That's pretty insane. It's crazy, and oh, happy Thanksgiving to everybody out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it, and we're gonna get super hardcore and uh, talk about everything. But we gotta, we gotta uh, thank uh, the people who brought us here. Thank you, Frable, and and everybody else. Yeah, we do. 
Everybody, uh, have a great, safe, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, eat too much, sleep too much, uh, and uh, dream Don't a lot of fishing. Sure, we're going to get on. We're going to be getting on the ice here in the next days and weeks. So I'm excited about it, bro. You and Heather again. Happy anniversary, 26 years, dude. That's uh, 26 that's, years. That, that's awesome. I'm happy I'll for drink, you guys. I'll drink to that. And, and my mother feels actually very sorry for him. <laughs> I'll leave you two to talk. Everybody, hey everybody, we're gonna we're gonna pull a winner. We'll be right back. Have a great night. Hey, bro, we got a winner. All right. Yeah. So, Lee Kimball, thank you for listening Lee. tonight. Uh, and thank you for all your comments and all your uh, your participation. It was pretty awesome to uh, to have you on board with us tonight. Bro, what do you think? Uh, should we yeah. Should we it was a tough, tough. I mean, it's really tough. And uh, congratulations, Lee. And uh, But it was really tough. We have some great viewers. And... Uh, it's you're, you know, we're we're going on the we're going on the list, so you're going to be winning soon. <laughs> so, congrats, Lee. Yeah, congrats, Lee. Everybody, thanks again for joining us on College Advice tonight, bro. You and Heather have a great Thanksgiving, and uh, we'll see you Sunday night, dude, at seven o'clock, seven p.m. All right, everybody, be safe on the ice. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you later. Bye. Thanks for watching this week's College of Ice. Stay tuned for all new episodes coming up.